Speaking of which, one of my favorite things here is the way that the left suggests, the tacit suggestion is when they say that you should censor places like the Daily Wire, that the legacy media are doing it right. Let me provide you an example with uh, how bad the legacy media are at this. They are just run by children. They're run by children. So the Washington Post, democracy dies in darkness. This is, a, this is a source that must be respected. The Washington Post, the historic Washington Post, Woodward and Bernstein, my God, the greatest journalism of all time. Okay, so the biggest controversy now engulfing the Washington Post is a hysterically funny controversy in which Dave Weigel, who used to be a member of what was called Journalist, okay, if you go all the way back, this is probably 15 years now, he was a member of a 400-person echo chamber called Journalist, where basically a bunch of journalists would get on there, they would talk to each other, and very often they would end up writing stories that very much reflected one another. And that was exposed to public view. This is when Dave Weigel was at Slate. He ended up moving from Slate over to the Washington Post. Well, the echo chamber still exists, except Dave Weigel crossed the echo chamber. He did something unpardonable. He retweeted a joke. Now, I know what you're saying. Wait, wait, he retweeted a joke? Why is that like a national news story? Ah, ha, ha. But this joke was sexist. Mm. And he angered, he angered the great powers that be over at the Washington Post. Not the editors. The editors were fine. It was, it was a couple of columnists, one named Felicia Sanmez and the other, the egregiously awful Taylor Lorenz. So according to CNN, the Washington Post has now suspended Weigel for one month without pay for retweeting a sexist joke. He didn't tell the sexist joke. He retweeted the sexist joke. Weigel did not respond to request for comment, but an out-of-office reply from his Post email address said he would not return to work on July 5th, that he would return to work on July 5th. Weigel apologized publicly last week for the retweet, saying he did not mean to cause any harm. Now, he didn't cause any harm. It was a retweeted bad joke. By the way, the, the entire joke was from a YouTuber named Cam Harless who said, every girl is bi. You just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. A dumb, sexist joke, not my cup of tea, clearly a joke, clearly a joke. So Dave Weigel immediately got slammed by the feminist wave. So apparently, Felicia Sanmez, one of his colleagues, spotlighted this. She recently had a discrimination lawsuit against the paper dismissed. A decision her attorney says she plans to appeal, which means she now owns the paper. Because the way that you apparently earn the editorship of a major American newspaper is you call the paper racist. Nicole Hannah-Jones now owns the New York Times. The way she owns the New York Times is she basically suggests that any colleague who crosses her is a vicious racist and they can't fire her because then they'll get hit with a discrimination lawsuit. So they basically turned over the editorial page of the New York Times to her. Right? Like the entire reporting body of the New York, Nicole Hannah-Jones is the de facto editor of the New York Times, at least insofar as if she doesn't like somebody working for the New York Times, very solid shot that person no longer works at the New York Times. So now Felicia Sanmez has realized the same game. She filed a discrimination lawsuit against the paper. It was dismissed. But now that she's done that, they know that if she gets fired, she's just going to file another lawsuit. So this means that if she finds someone at the paper who she can accuse of sexual discrimination and the paper does not retaliate against that person, she will sue them again. So she now owns the paper by threat of lawsuit. So Sanmaz sarcastically wrote on Twitter on Friday, quote, it is fantastic to work at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. She attached the screen grab showing Weigel's retweet. Sanmez apparently confronted Weigel in an internal company Slack channel. She tagged him and wrote, I'm sorry, but what is this? Sanmez added in the Slack channel that the retweet, quote, sent a confusing message about what the post's values are. So just to get this straight, if the post does not punish a columnist for his own Twitter feed, which the post does not run, retweeting a bad joke, then the post obviously embraces the joke. Now, we here at The Daily Wire, we don't control the Twitter feeds of the people who work for us. And we don't. People post stuff all the time. I'm sure that I disagree with. Is the idea that if I don't monitor everything that everyone who works at the Daily Wire tweets ever, and they retweet a bad joke, that it is my obligation to fire them? Is that the, is that the idea here? Apparently, that is the idea. Others on Friday joined the discussion in the Slack channel, prompting ed national editor Mattia Gold to write, I just want to assure all of you that the Post is committed to maintaining a respectful workplace for everyone. We do not tolerate demeaning language or actions. The Post chief spokesperson, Chris Caratti, also issued a statement to the press saying, editors have made clear to the staff the tweet was reprehensible and demeaning language or actions like that will not be tolerated. But according to CNN, the public and private admonishment of Weigel's retweet has failed to quell tension inside the Post. Jose Real, a, Jose Del Real, a reporter at the Post, responded on, Tuesday, on Twitter Saturday to Sanmez's initial tweet. Del Real said Weigel's tweet was terrible and unacceptable, but he said, rallying the internet to attack him for a mistake he made doesn't actually solve anything. We all mess up in some way or another. There is such a thing as challenging with compassion, which is like a rational response. If you don't like a tweet, then why don't you call up the person and be like, I don't like that tweet very much and give them a chance to say, oh yeah, you know what? That was a dumb thing. I shouldn't have retweeted that and take it down. 
Nope. Had to publicly shame him. Somnes responded saying, calling out sexism isn't cruelty. It is something that is absolutely necessary. Then Sanmez and Del Riel, who both work for the Post, decided to get into a bleep fight. They proceeded to engage in a back and forth over Twitter on Saturday, with Del Riel ultimately moving to temporarily deactivate his account. Sally Busby, executive editor of the Post, tried on Sunday morning to rein in the newsroom by sending a memo reminding staffers to treat each other with respect and kindness, both in the newsroom and online. So basically, we are now in middle school. The principal has to come and be like, guys, you have to stop hitting each other. Stop, stop pulling the pigtails. Just stop it. Stop doing that. Be nice to each other. Busby said the Washington Post is committed to an inclusive and respectable environment, free of harassment, discrimination, or bias of any sort, which is code for please don't sue us. We're punishing Dave. Please don't sue us. When issues arise, please raise them with leadership or human resources. We will address them promptly and firmly. However, the attempt by leadership to squash the controversy failed again. Sanmez on Sunday afternoon said on Twitter, Busby's note had provided fodder for more harassment against her. So in other words, the Post is like, Guys, if you can handle this internally, that'd be great. And she's like, stop harassing me. I might sue you. Del Riel reactivated his account and posted a statement on Sunday afternoon saying he faced a, quote, unrelenting series of attacks intended to tarnish my professional and personal reputation after tweeting at Sanmez. Sanmez then proceeded to call out Del Riel for blocking her and said that instead of apologizing, he had instead made a series of false accusations and mischaracterizations in his statement. Sanmez, for instance, said she saw no comments intending to harm Del Riel's reputation. Sanmez then tagged Busby and Gold on Twitter and said she'd reached out to them to discuss the matter, but that she hadn't heard back. Retaliation against a colleague for speaking out against sexism is never okay, Sanmez wrote. I hope the Washington Post leaders treat this as the serious issue that it is. So she went after, so this guy wrote back to her and said, you know, you could treat people with some compassion while still disagreeing with a bad tweet. And she's like, you're a bad person and I hope you burn. And he's like, well, that's, that's not very nice. And she's like, why isn't the Washington Post firing this one? That's discrimination. This is what happens when you hire crazy people and then when you let the crazy people run the asylum. By Monday morning, tension at the Post was still high, says CNN. Video technician Brianna Muir responded to Busby's all-staff email applauding Sanmez for speaking out against harassment, discrimination, and sexism. So it's good. Then now you've got like basically all the, all the kooks on the Washington Post staff were like, I smell a lawsuit. That's a deep pocket. By the way, my deepest heartfelt sympathies go out to the editors of the Washington Post who deserve every single bit of all of this. I feel so bad for you. And by so bad, I mean happy and gleeful inside because you spent years promoting people like Taylor Lorenz who targets people for destruction based on nothing. So you deserve every single iota of this, every jot and tittle of this you deserve. Muir attached a tweet showing that Micah Gelman, the head of the Post video team, had once misidentified her as Brianna Taylor. Um... So you, you just mess, messed up the name, and that's harassment too. Muir said, if the Washington Post is committed to an inclusive and respectful environment free of harassment, discrimination, or bias of any sort, can someone please help me understand Michael Gelman and Dave Waggle's tweets and retweets? These tweets and retweets not only hurt women in our newsroom, but make it extremely difficult to do our best work. Ultimately, it creates a toxic work environment. Gelman had already apologized to Muir for misidentifying her. When the incident happened in February, he wrote on Twitter in a long thread last night, thanking my staff for working exhaustive hours. I inadvertently misidentified Brianna Muir. He was thanking her in the tweet and messed up her name. And she says that's harassment. That's insane. I mean, this is like if I was thanking producer Jessica and by accident, I was like, and thanks to Jessica Alba. Because I messed up the name. And then she's like, that's sexual harassment. I was like, what? No, I just messed up. the. I was thanking you. What? But apparently at the post, this counts as harassment because, again, when you're a big corporation, people like suing you. I reached out to apologize and do so here now, said Gelman. We're working extremely long hours. While this was not intentional, it should not have happened. Coretti also released a statement at the time, noting that Gelman apologized both privately and publicly for this mistake. Karate then added, however, we do not take the impact of that error lightly and regret the emotional toll it has had on Brianna. We've also reached out to her and are committed to fostering an inclusive environment throughout the newsroom. The emotional toll of, of somebody messing up your name in a Twitter thread thanking you? The emotional toll? So uh, I will just point out at this point that the original tweet that was retweeted by Dave Weigel suggested that women are crazy. And the way that these women at the Washington Post have decided to rebut that claim is by being as crazy as living hell. Weigel retweets something saying that women are bipolar or bisexual. Again, a bad, stupid joke. And then the women are like, what if I act super bipolar? Hmm? Hmm? Hey, what in the world? It's, it's hysterical. It's really, really, really funny. And you know what? These are the people they want they want controlling the discourse. These are the people they've decided, you know, it's the Washington Post should maximize its reach on Facebook. But Dan, Dan Pfeiffer says that if you view articles from the Daily Wire 
This means that you are bad, and this is a cancer on our democracy. Meanwhile, the paper, whose slogan is Democracy Dies in Darkness, initiated, of course, only after Donald Trump was president because he was the democracy. He was the killer of democracy. He was the darkness. That paper is so, it's, it's a high school yearbook meeting. And that is, the, that is the most respected paper in America. That in the New York Times, which is just filled with dullards. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine why the American, guys, I'm sorry, but your little cadre of morons who echo each other, except when they are busily burning witches in the Washington Post newsroom, you going in the back room with the Democratic Party and playing seven minutes in heaven, that is not going to save you in 2022. It is not. You can try it. You can try doing this the January 6th routine. You can try shutting down your opposition. It ain't going to work. And man, you're going to get punished and you deserve to be punished by the American voter. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?